life. I don't know him personally, but he was influenced on mine. We praise you. We thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise so God. To be here. I'm so blessed to hear all of y'all worshiping and praising the Lord, and that is what this is all about. Amen. 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 This is not some, some academic exercise. This is not some Amen. learning experience. This is a, a time for us to reflect, a time for us to praise the Lord and give Him the glory. Give him the all the glory that He deserves. He deserves yeah. all the glory. Yeah. All the honor. Yeah. All the praise. Yeah. And I love that y'all are interactive here, and I just want to uh, just prep you that uh, I ask questions, and yeah. these are these are reflective questions, right. and so I'm going to follow up with, uh, with with some 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 more uh, understanding of or reflection of the questions. So why the why the resurrection? Why why even have to have that? You know, was, was there any other way? Uh, wh why why did Jesus have to die? Why did Jesus die? And, and what is the significance of the resurrection of Christ? What what does that mean to us? So these are these are thoughts and understandings that we, we need to not only be able to reflect on but be able to answer. And so ultimately. What, is, what does it mean to you? What is, it, what is the fact that Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life, was born of, of a virgin, there was no father, yeah. and uh, oh, that he was miraculously conceived in the womb of Mary, and, and, and born and lived a perfect life, never yeah. sinned, not even once, he had to be God to be perfect, he had to be man to die, yeah. lived a perfect life, shed his blood voluntarily as a satisfaction of God's wrath, and, and, and as atonement for your and my sin, and rose from the dead, true he is. Well, what does this mean to you? And what are you learning today? Well, you're, here's ultimately, you know, all of, all of that ultimately happened all, all those 2,000 plus years ago. Oh, yeah. But how do we, how do we get into heaven? Oh, hey, the significance of that, how, how do we get into heaven? To learn the answer, I'm, I'm going to turn over to John chapter 3. And uh, if you have your Bible, let me read now the English Standard Version. I don't know what version y'all use. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know that the King James is too. Yeah, the Apostle yeah, Paul. Yeah, I'll read now the English Standard Version. I like that. What, what version? John, John chapter 3. What version? And, and I'll begin in verse 1 of, okay. of John chapter 3. As, 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 the Lord, as the Lord speaks through this. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, <laughs> a ruler of the Jews. Yeah, yeah. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, come on. for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Yeah, right. Amen. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, come on. you cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Yeah. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Come on, come on, come on. Uh -huh. come Jesus on. answered, truly, truly, I say to you, yeah. unless one is born of water come and on. the Spirit, yes, sir, he yes. cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. That which is born of flesh is flesh, All right. and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Come Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Yeah. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit of the Lord. Nicodemus said, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you. We speak of what we know yeah. and bear witness to what we have seen, yeah. but you do not receive our testimony. Uh -oh. If I have told you earthly things and right. you do not believe, yeah. how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? <laughs> no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, yeah. the Son of Man. Yeah. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted yeah. up, that whoever believes in him, yeah. May have eternal yeah. life. Yeah. For God so loved the world yeah. that He gave yeah. His own yeah. Son, yeah. so that whoever yeah. believes in Him should not perish, yeah. but yeah. have yeah. eternal life. Yeah. May yeah. God add yeah. His blessing to the church. So I'll just give us some context. Uh, we we have 
Nicodemus that comes to Jesus by night. I, call, I, I say Nick at night. I can remember it that way. You know, and some people say, you know, oh, well, Nicodemus, you know, he's, he's one of the Pharisees. He didn't want to be seen with Jesus, so he came to him by night. And then other people say, well, you know, Nic Nic Nicodemus, he, he wanted some face time with Jesus. The, the text isn't really clear. But, I mean, if, if, if I want to have some one-on-one -on -one time with you, oh, okay. you know, oh, yeah. you read throughout uh, oh. all throughout the Gospels Come on. Come on. how popular Jesus has become. And the crowds are on all the time, yeah. surrounding him and so forth. And so, you know, I've got to believe that if we want to have some one-on-one -on -one dialogues, and so, 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 you know, and, 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 you know, and of course he's God in court, so he's not like me, where he's like ADHD. <laughs> you know, if, if I'm talking to you and somebody says something, all of a sudden I completely forget your name and who I'm talking to. Come on. I'm sure Jesus wouldn't like that. He so God, he nevertheless, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. We don't know why. The uh -oh. text isn't clear. I don't mind mm. saying the text isn't clear. But he's, you know, Nicodemus says, hey, I know you've come from God because you can't do all of these things unless you're from God. You know, of course, it'd be very easy for Jesus to say, well, yeah, of course, I am God. That's why I'm doing these things and so forth. But, but his mission never varies. You know, he, he said in other places in the, in, the, in the Gospels, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. So he, he came right into his mission. And so he says, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. And so, I'm going to hold tight right there. With that. Unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. Nicodemus doesn't understand. He's like, how can a man be born again when he's old? How can he enter his mother, mother's womb when, when he's old? And so he, he, he doesn't understand what, what Jesus is talking about, about uh, this idea of, of being born again. Now, I'm going to wax eloquent on you for a second. It's in Greek. Come on, come okay? On. The Greek word for again is anathem. Anathem. And if you, if you, if you look throughout uh, the text all over the Bible, sometimes that word anathem is, is, is from above. Come on. Other times you see it, it, it as again. Now, I'm old. I'm just going to let you know I'm on. And I remember when Jimmy Carter was running for president. All right. Okay, I remember. And I remember he was saying, I'm a born again Christian. All right. All right? I'm a born again Christian. Well, why did he say that? Because, you know, I, I believe that, you know, Christine and I don't have a personal relationship, but I believe that the reason he's saying that is because there are a lot of people that say, I'm a Christian. Well, yeah, come on. There's a lot of reasons why somebody says I'm a Christian. You say, I'm a Christian. And I say, well, what, what makes you say that? You say, well, you know, I'm a good person. You <laughs> say, I'm a Christian. Oh, well, you know, I go to church. You know, three, three times out of the day, I go to, I go to church. I, I own a Bible. You know, all these, uh, so he says, I'm a born again Christian. Born again. A born again Christian. Yeah. And so, so Jesus goes on to clarify. About what that means. Come on. And it means like, uh, you know, how can you, I'm not talking, he says, I'm not talking about physical birth, I'm talking about spiritual birth. And then he says, unless one is born of water and the spirit. Now, if you have your Bible, notice that this is, there's a big S right here. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Come on, come on. Now, there's some people that say, well, what, what is he talking about there? Well, he's talking about being born of water. Well, there's, a, there's some folks that say, well, uh, you know, you know, born of water, you know, when the woman is pregnant, you know, and, and, and her water breaks, and then she had, so physical birth, and when the woman's water breaks. The problem with that, that phraseology is, you know, sometimes, friends, when we interpret the Bible, we've got to go back to the original culture. You know, we have to go back to the original language. And we have to look at the original culture, the original language, and say, is that something that people said? And in the first century, in Jerusalem, they did not refer to physical birth as being born of water. It can't mean that. <coughs> there are some other people that say, baptism. You have to be baptized in order to, in order to enter the kingdom. Born of, born of water means water baptism. But you see, the Bible doesn't conflict itself. Oh, right. It doesn't conflict itself. So over in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 9, it says, For we are saved by grace yeah. through faith. Yeah. And this, grace through faith, yeah. is not of yourself. It's a gift from God and not by works. Hallelujah. So they don't want you both. Right. Okay? So, so 
If I have to be baptized in order to enter the kingdom, that's, that's a work. That's, work. work. that's something I do. That's something I do out of my own volition, out of my, out of my own power. Now, I, 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 I do that out of obedience, because you see, if you keep reading in Ephesians, in verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, yeah. created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that mm -hmm. we would mm -hmm. walk in them. Yeah. So if, if, if I'm a Christian, if I'm a born again Christian, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to walk in those ways. If we're going to do an ordinance today, the Lord's table, that's an ordinance. Baptism is an ordinance. I'm going to follow in believer's baptism if I'm really born again. But there's no requirement of baptism for right. you to be saved. It's an act of obedience. So it can be. Born again, can, born of, the, of water cannot be baptism. So what, what is he talking about? What, is what does he mean? Mm, come on. I'm glad you asked. Because you see, later on in the text, we see that Jesus says, Are you the teacher of Israel? You come, on, come on, come on. Now, there are a lot of people that read that and they say, oh, That's pretty harsh. Yeah. Jesus is pretty harsh. You think he doesn't know how to beat him up. Come on. No, he's not. What he's saying is, hey, Nicodemus, you're probably the Sunday school teacher in the same Hebrew. Yeah. You got the Old Testament memorized. Yeah. Go back and read it. Go back and read it. So if we go back to this passage over in Ezekiel, there's a passage over in Ezekiel chapter 36. And in Ezekiel 36, there's a description, and let me just preface this, okay? This is written to Israel. All right, now I'm reading Israel's mail. Okay. <laughs> okay? Okay? Yeah. Like, oh, please understand that if we are reading a book of the Bible that is written to a different group of people, uh -oh. we, we read them mail. Yeah. Okay? Now, if I, if I go if I go over in, into my, 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 my mother's or, my, or your grandmother's, you know, I'm older, so I'm not saying much. And I, and I, I can find a shoebox. And I open the shoebox, and there are all these love letters yeah. written from my dad to my mom. Yeah. Right. And I start reading those love letters. Oh, you, I adore you. You're the light of my life. You know, your kisses are sweet. And I, and I read my dad's writings, and if I read that like it's written to me, that's a little weird. That's a little It's written to me. Right. And I'm reading it like it's written to me. <laughs> I'm missing out on what, it, what the context is. Who's, this is Israel's mail. Okay, All right. Know, know who, the, who the people are, the audience is that's being written to, and know the occasion. Yeah. So the reason is written. What do you say? All right. So over the, this is a description. This is a, listen, this is a description of what's going to happen to Israel in the Millennial Kingdom. However, it also, see, there, there's, there's this, this dual description here. It's also a description. Listen to the phrase. Uh, pay hey, very close attention. Listen. Pay hey, very close attention to the I wills. Okay. 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 All right? <laughs> I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall well, be clean from all your uncleanness. Well, and well, Ezekiel 36. Verse 25. Okay, 25 right now. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness Come and on. from all your idols. Come I on. will cleanse you. Yeah. Yeah. Born of water. Yeah. Born of water. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Born of water and the spirit. Let's keep going. All right? And Verse 26. All right, come I on. will give you a new heart. Hallelujah. Now I know, I know Pastor Terry <laughs> having a master's degree from, from Dallas Theological Seminary. Yes. All right. He's talk to you about what the Bible means when it says heart. Come on. Yeah, all right? It's the will. Yes. It's the desires. Yeah. It's the mind. Right. It's the mindset. Come on. It's the come focus. On. All right. Yeah. He's gonna give us a new heart. A new Thank will. You. A new desire, a new purpose, a new focus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? A new focus. Okay? I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit. Everybody read with me? Spirit. Is that a little S? Yes. There's a little S. Yeah. Okay? That's 
That's you. That's you. Did you know that if you go back to the book of Genesis, we're not going to go there. We don't have time. Okay. Otherwise, we'll be to Methodist to <laughs> <laughs> Go back in the book of Genesis. Yeah. God says in the Bible, He says, in the image of God, He Come created on. them. Come on. And male and female, Come He on. created them. <laughs> in the image of God. All right? That last word in my new day means that we are created in the image of God. Now, yeah. yeah. go to the place in the Bible that says, no one see God at any time and cannot see Him because God is. Of spirit. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. So you are the real you. Lord. Is spirit. Yeah. spirit. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. The real you. you is spirit. Yeah. All right. And Wait. so we just encased in this raw flesh, so that we can access the physical. Okay. Yeah. All right. The so real you is spirit. So he says, and a new spirit. Uh huh. I will put within you, uh -huh. and I will remove the heart of stone from your Ooh. flesh okay. and give you a heart of flesh. Okay. Anybody read the next? Anybody? Yes. Every time here at Resurrection Sunday, I don't, I don't usually say Easter. I say Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. But every 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 Easter, every Resurrection Sunday, they play the Ten Commandments. The Charles and Ted. They played it last night. Remember that? Yeah. All right. I think there's so we know before Pharaoh, and the text in the Bible of Exodus says, yeah. and Pharaoh hardened his heart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hardened his heart. Come on. Yeah. And it goes on to say, and God hardened, hardened Pharaoh's heart. Yeah. yeah. A hard heart, my friends, is a is a, a, a way to say he don't believe. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did not believe that God was going to do what he said he was going to do his place. Yeah. Right? So when it says, I will remove the heart of stone from you, that means he's going to remove unbelief from you yeah. and give you a heart of flesh. That's a description yeah. of belief. A belief. A belief. All right? Let's heart. keep going. Give you a heart and, and a new spirit will put within you and remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27. And I will put... My spirit Woo! within you. Hallelujah. Everybody got me? Hallelujah. The whole life. All right? All right? And I will put my spirit within my. you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Born of water and the spirit, my friends, yeah. is this description that's given to us in Ezekiel 36, verse 25. Now, maybe you're more familiar with, with chapter 37. That describes the dry bones. Oh, the, 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 the oh, vision that the seed gets to see the dry bone. The dry bone. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe you maybe you had a steak and you saw in there. You seen that that little that little center of the rib there, the rib eye. Where? Well, they call it a rib eye because yeah. it, looks like, it looks like an eye, right? Where? Well, in the middle of it, that's marrow, and it describes that that marrow is dry. Come on, it's yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah. All right, and so he destruct. He he, he tell, talks about this regeneration. All right, right, and then he gives that that, that vision of the dry bones. Oh, how it takes dead the bones eight. and assembles them and, and gives gives life. Yeah. Gives life. Yeah. Now, over, there there is a description of this in the New Testament. He's saying you read out of the Old Testament and you read this from the man. Where? Well, yeah. That's Doug. That's a man. Go on over to Titus. Over to Titus, toward the end there. Yeah, yeah, Titus right before Hebrews. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know the Bible said yeah, yeah, yeah. that the man's supposed to make the coffee. Because <laughs> Hebrews. Titus. Where's that? Where's that? Yeah. All right, Titus. Yeah. Over to Titus. Yeah. Listen. Over to Titus. Going to you going to chapter 3. All right. Verse, uh, on Titus, verse 4. All right. Listen. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Hallelujah. Not because of works done by us in no. righteousness, but according to His own mercy, Hallelujah. the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit will be poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that... By being justified by His grace, 
unmerited favor. We might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that though you have believed in God, they be careful to devote themselves in good works. You see, the good works follow, like it said over in Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God would do and that we would walk in them. Works do not save us, do it works are a byproduct that we Come on. Do all. Okay. Born of water and spirit. So he says that. Let's keep going. All right, because there's more. There's more meat on these bones. Come on, come on. Right. Uh, Ezekiel 36. I should have, I should have shown that to you. You've been able to look it up yourself, right? Yeah. And we also looked at Titus chapter three, verses four through seven. You know, take notes. You feel free to write these down. All right. That is a description of regeneration. That is a description of what it means to be born from above, born again. All right. Born again. All right. Born again. All right. Born again. So here, here's my visual. All right, we'll notice two silhouettes. Uh-oh. And these silhouettes here are identical. All right? Because Jesus says, the wind blows where it wishes. Well, yes. You cannot see where it comes from yes. or where it goes. Yeah. All right? So if I'm, if I'm outside, I was outside last weekend. We had, we had a house church over my house. And we're sitting out on the patio and I fire up the grill. The wind blowing at 30 miles an hour. I'm thinking, okay, the wind is going to blow my grill. But the wind's blowing, but I could see it. Right? I couldn't see the wind, but I could see what it was doing. All right. Yeah. So when you get when you get born again, nobody will look at you and say, "Hey, you look different." You know, you you, look, you know, Pastor Doug, you got a little less gray in here now. You lost a little weight. No, you know, you look different from the outside. You yeah. look different. From the inside. Yeah. All, right. All right? Before you and I were regenerated, if you're a believer, if you're a follower of Christ, if you believe salvation by the name of you are a new creation of Christ. Hallelujah. And before that, this is a representation of that old spirit. Yeah. yeah. Unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You were born with a sin nature. And you're encased in the sarks, which is a flawed flesh. Right. Mm. All right? You're still encased in your flawed flesh. It's true. That's why you keep messing up. True. That's why I keep messing up. But hallelujah, I have been set free from the bondage. And like our brother Terry said, I've been set free. I'm no longer slave. I'm to the slave to sin. I'm slave to righteousness. But before that, I had a sin nature. And unless this sin nature is born again, I cannot enter the kingdom. And so that description of regeneration is what happens to me. When I get born again, yes. my spiritual eyes are open, and I realize the truth of salvation by faith in Christ. I realize the truth of who and who <laughs> Jesus is and who I am. Hallelujah. For that. Amen. 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 So he says, the wind blows where it wishes. You don't see where it comes from or where it's going. It's a metaphor for what happens. That new, that new nature that is, that is placed in us is the action of being born again. Now, we talked about being in the air. We talked about that first Thessalonians 4 passage that talks about when we'll get our new bodies. Oh, you see, our new bodies are going to be perfect. Yeah. Not only am I not going to need a hip replacement, that new body, right? But, but it's going to be perfected in, in, in how, I, how I walk, in my walk, in my yeah. lifestyle, my yeah. lifestyle. Because of what he has done, yeah. because of what he does in me. So that wind description is it, there's, there's no exterior difference. <clears throat> now, I may look at you, you know, when you look at someone who's a new creation of Christ, you can see the love and the light in that person. Yeah, yeah. You can see it. Okay. So Jesus says, Are you the, and I use that definite article, and I emphasize it. Some people are you the teacher of Israel? No. Are you the teacher of Israel? Come and you don't understand these things? No. Come on. Right? So, so he's, he's, he, what you know he's doing here is he's, he's loving him. Yeah. yeah. Better is open for you than love that's concealed. Right. Oh, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, deceitful are the kiss of enemy. You read that in Proverbs. Yeah. So, see, I mean, what, is, what is he doing? He's saying, you, you, you've got the Old Testament memorized, Nicodemus. You go back and read. The text and he went back, I believe, he went back and he read right. this passage. All right. Born of water and the spirit. You know why I believe that? 
And we know there's more evidence of that because if you read through the Gospels, you'll find that Nicodemus, at Jesus' burial, brought a hundred pounds of spies to right. his burial. You know what that is? That's a burial of a king in the culture. So Nicodemus is saying, you are king. You are king. So you see, he points it back there in a loving way to help Nicodemus understand that he needs to be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. Yes. Right. Because you see, it's not being a Pharisee. No. no. You see, the faith, you know, in the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and, and the scribes, they, they made up, they comprised that Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin was developed by Israel when they, they got pulled off into exile. Right. They're over there in exile, and they're like, you know, we royally messed up. They read back in Deuteronomy, said, yep, yeah, it's exactly what we were told was going to happen. Yeah. And here we sit, yeah. over yeah. in exile, yeah. because we messed up. Yeah. Hey, let's write everything down that happened. Oh, come and, on. and chronicle it in First and Second Chronicles. Right? Yeah. And then when we get back to the land, let's appoint a group of people that are the best of the best, and they can police us and make, make sure that we have oh, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Police. That's the same Hebrew. Then right. came the police of the law. Yeah. You know what happened? The, the law became God. Yeah, not right. right. And so he says, it's not the law. It's not the law. Uh -huh. It's being born again. Amen. 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 So let's go back and look at John three, chapter 3 again. Just kind of refresh ourselves on, on what, what, what we're talking about here. Yeah. So if I go, if I begin to put some them. Yeah. Here yeah. it says, "Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony." I'm gonna pause there for a second. Okay, we speak of what we know, and what what we see, what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. You know why? Yeah, you're not able to, to know it or see it because Jesus hadn't risen from the dead. All right. Yeah. All right. Really? If I told you earthly things and you don't believe, yeah. how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Yeah. No one has ascended into heaven except he who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Now, you know what? He he gave him. Him. Here's yeah. another clue. Yeah, he did. Here's yeah. another clue. Because yeah. all of a sudden, Jesus dies on the cross yeah. three yeah. days later. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're celebrating that yeah. day, yeah. Resurrection yeah. Sunday. Yeah. He rises from the dead. The tomb is empty. Yeah. Nicodemus goes over there and peeks in. Yeah. No Jesus. The seal is broken. That, that stone's rolled away. Yeah. These guys couldn't have done that. Yeah. Obviously. And then all of a sudden, all of these saints who were dead came back to life and they're walking around. So so cousin cousin Jimmy <laughs> is walking around saying, like, I thought you died. Yeah. Right? So all this all this have dark for three hours. Mm. All yeah. these things, you see. See, what we see here is, is that, that, that evidence. So he says, no one has ascended into heaven except he who sinned from heaven, son of man. And then he goes on to, to explain to us something very important. And verse 14 says this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Yeah. Now what are you talking about there? As Moses lifted up the serpent of the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now, this, my friends, is an account of something that happened over in the book of Numbers. And I have the passage up there for you if you want to go look it up. So over in Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9, there's an account of what happened, all right? You remember, you know, as, as we remember our time, you know, in, in, in Exodus, you watch the Ten Commandments, they're the released from bondage, they cross the Red Sea, right? And here they are wandering around in the wilderness. And in verse 4 of Exodus, I mean, sorry, Numbers no. chapter 21, it says this. It says, from Mount War, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And the people became impatient on the way. Let me tell you yeah. something. You ever been impatient? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Raise your hand if you've never been impatient. Uh, yeah. You've never okay. been impatient. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not only was you been impatient, you've been lying. Yeah. You've been lying. We all have been impatient. Let me show you how God deals 
with impatience. Right? Are you ever right. thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ has, has said you, that you are impatient? Because this is how God responds to impatience. What is that? All right? And the people became impatient along the way. Verse 5. Yeah. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Oh. You were kicked out against God? Yeah. Mm. Why are you doing this to me? I don't deserve I, this. Yeah. yeah. You've been mad at God? Yes. Yeah. You've been mad at, 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 at Terry? Yeah. How dare you yeah. like that? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is how God heals you. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. The people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? When there is no food or water, we know this worthless food. And they're shaking up this this dust off the ground. Come on, forty years. I'm not going to be patient too. Oh, never, never. Check it out. Check it out. Come on. Verse 6. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents uh -oh. among the people. Uh -oh. And they beat the people. Uh -oh. So the many of Israel died. Come uh on. -oh. And of course. We're not being. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. Uh -oh. And we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Uh -oh. We have prayed to the Lord that he take away the serpents from uh -oh. us. Uh -oh. yeah. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent. And set it on a pole. Yeah. Everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. Right. So yeah. Moses made a bronze serpent, set it on a pole, okay. and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Hey, so hey, hey, he would hey, 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 do his work. Hey, hey, right? hey, Think about this. All right. Okay. So the people, they're impatient. Yeah. They're kicking out against God, they're kicking hey. out against their leader Moses. Yeah. So God since fire the serpents into the camp. And then the, the, the serpents are yeah. fighting yeah. the people. Yeah. And the people are trying to avoid them. Yeah. They don't hear the invitation. And so, they cry to God. <laughs> Save us. <laughs> Pray to God. We, 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 we need you to intercede for us. We need you to intercede <laughs> for us. Pray to God. Yeah. So Moses prays. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, God says, okay. <coughs> Make a serpent, stick it on a pole, and tell the people that they get bit by a, a, a fiery serpent that they just look to the serpent on the pole, yeah. and they'll live. Yeah, now, how many people you think were like, what? <laughs> look at the serpent on the pole. Don't should we just take a knife and cut it between the two? Uh -oh.
to believe yeah. God's promises, yeah. to look to the serpent, and to believe God's promises in what Jesus yeah. had done yeah. on the cross. Amen. That's Amen. it. Hallelujah. So, I like to have the one main point. Maybe you've seen preachers that are like five point preachers. Yeah. I used to be a three point preacher, and then one time somebody asked the preacher, What were those three points you preached on last week? And I was like, but I, I don't remember. You know, friends, if I spend 40 hours putting something like this together and I can't remember the points next week, uh -oh. I'm going to expect you to remember them. How about that? I just do one point. I give you one point a week, then that's 52 points. So, right. you can, so born again means to be regenerated. Yes. That's what is regenerated. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, so, so the takeaway I would expect us to ask, the question I would expect us to ask, is how can I be born again? How can uh -huh. I be born in of it? How can I be born? Well, I, I like to explain this in, in the way that they did. Anybody ever been to vacation Bible school? You ever taught vacation Bible school? I really yeah. love the simplicity of the ABCs of salvation. <laughs> you see, friends, yeah. as we look at this, what we have to begin with is that we have to admit that we are incapable of earning our way into God's favor. Come on. Right? Uh -huh. Not by works. Not by works. And we think from time to time that there's some kind of water water mark. Water. A water mark. Let's say that the top of this TV right here, yeah. or this monitor, is the watermark. You think, okay, if my works are above that, if my good works are above the watermark, I'm good. Yeah. But if I'm below the watermark, I'm not good. But if you look at somebody else and they below the watermark, you say they lost. Because they're not acting. They're not behaving. They're not committing. They're not with it. All right. well, you know, the, problem, the problem with this mentality is, friends, that the watermark is perfection. Mm. All right. The watermark is perfection. Amen. That's right. Raise your hand if you believe heaven is perfect. Yeah. You believe heaven is perfect? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I, yeah. Know, I, do. I, do. I know it is. He made it. He made it. He made it. He made it. Raise your hand if you are perfect. No. <laughs> 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 you can't. 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 Uh-oh. It went there. If you raise your hand, you mind, which means you now are not perfect. <laughs> so the first thing we have to do, friends, is we have to admit I am incapable of measuring up to what God is expectation. I must, I must admit I am incapable. I am not able in and of myself. To be what's necessary for me to enter the kingdom. Come on. Which begs the question I need, I need to be someone to intervene for that. I need to someone to intervene for me. And so I have to be, believe that that individual is Jesus Christ. I have to believe that that, that intercessor, that advocate is Jesus Christ. Now, maybe some of y'all know that I'm, I'm a staff chaplain over at the Harris County Sheriff's Jail. Okay. And so I go I go to these guys and I talk to them about, about this stuff. And I say, you know, Jesus Christ is your advocate. All right. Like, okay, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, you know what that word advocate in the Greek is? Attorney. He's your, Jesus is your church. Yeah, come on. All right. So, so maybe you've been in court. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe you did on like jury duty in court. All right. And so you look over here and you see the accused are sitting there at the table. Yeah. Right next to that guy is the attorney. Yeah. All right. Picture yourself right here. Picture Jesus, your attorney, right there. God the Father, right up there on the judge's seat. In his robe. And God the Father levies his sins. He has done this. 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 And he just made all those things in you. The video is playing in your mind right now. All those things that you know everybody know you did. And all those things that everybody knows you did. Come on. He knows. He knows. And so he turns to Jesus. Yeah. And he says, guilty or not guilty. Ooh, mm. And Ooh. so Jesus stands up, and you know, many people might say that Jesus is not guilty, but he doesn't. He says he's guilty of all. Hell yeah. Hell guilty yeah. of all. Hell but I will take the punishment. Ooh. Yeah. Ah, 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 
I will take the punishment. There's no way to connect the two. I will pay the price. Yeah. Death. Death. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I have to believe. I have to believe that the salvific actions of Jesus Christ on earth and on the cross are sufficient to the price for all of the things that I messed up. And all of the things that I did. He's paid the price for those. There you go. There you go. And there's one more step. Come on. Come on. you see, over in the book of James, it says even the demons believe. There they go. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. They may never be, my friends, that you and I have a demonic view of salvation. All right. All right. Because even the demons believe that. They're right. They're right. They're right. They're right. And we Because you see, the Bible says over in Romans chapter 10, All right. that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, yeah. and believe in your heart that God yeah. the dead, yeah. you will be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that, that word confess, that's a Latin word, it's a compound word. Yeah. You ever heard anyone say, come on now, fess up? Uh -huh. yeah. That means to say. Yeah. Come on, I mean, to yeah. say with. Okay, now, see, there are people that will say, well, you need to pray the sinner's prayer because that's confessing with your mouth. Okay. I'm sorry, friends, I, I, I looked through the whole Bible, I do not see the sinner's prayer in the Bible. That's a work, by the way. If you ask Jesus in your heart, if you pray the sinner's prayer and ask Jesus in your heart, that's a work. Don't forget all the I wills. Uh, I will. I will. Right? Yeah. I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you let him, let him do it. And I will give you a new heart. And I will remove the heart of stone and give you heart of flesh. And mm -hmm. I will put a new spirit in you. And I'll put my spirit in you. I will, I will, I will, I will. If you confess, if you yeah. agree, it's not agreeing with man. Oh, yeah. Because you see, it's not man. It's man. I'm agreeing with God. I admit that I cannot yeah. earn my way to God's way. Yeah. I believe Jesus Christ paid the price for yes. yeah. By his actions, by his actions alone, yeah. yeah. right. then I say, I confess that Jesus is, is the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Like you heard that word, Adonai? Yes. Okay. That's one word for Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 The word here is curios. Curios. Curios means that he is large and in charge. He is God and he is Lord. I am accountable to him. I'm accountable to him. I'm accountable to him. Now we accountable to people in our lives. Do we nail them? We do. We do. Yeah. That does not negate our accountability. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. My, my boss? Right. right? I'm accountable to my boss. Yeah. Do I mess up? He is. If they give me instructions and I, I fail to, to, to do those things, I do that often. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm accountable to But you are accountable. Yeah, right. Boss. Yeah, right. right. We are accountable. We confess that Jesus is curious. <coughs> accountable to him. And recognition of accountability to Jesus Christ. <coughs> Is that component that, that is evidence that you and I are born in a day. Okay? This is evidence. Mm. If you I recognize this, if you I recognize the truth of this, that is evidence that Boy, you yeah. are a new creation of Christ. Because you see, this is the center of all creation and all history. Jesus Christ is the center. Like, like, like Pastor Terry said earlier, this is not plan B. No. It's not plan C. No. It's plan A. From the get go, from the get go, you look at every possible scenario throughout the Bible. That right. Adam and Eve in the garden, sinless and, and innocent, <coughs> messed up. Give a conscience. This is right, this is wrong. Messed up. Messed up. Right? Put in the evil government in place. Messed up. Messed up. Messed up. Give patriarchs to talk directly with God. Messed up. Woo! Give them the Get law. It. Write it all down. Get it. Messed up. Messed up. <laughs> Messed up. We dwell in with the Holy Spirit. Messed up. Messed up. Messed up. Messed up. Messed up. Messed up. Raise your hand if you didn't mess up after, after you got saved. 